Welcome back to the show. Just in case you're just tuning in, this is Robin Minds. You can join the conversation by tweeting at us at TV. On Instagram, we are at Television. So moving on to the second discourse for today, we will be talking about the African Cup of Nations 2019. What are your predictions? Of course, we are all happy that our beloved country, Nigeria, has reached the semi-final stage and it will be going down today. We have four countries that will be battling for their spots at the finals. Of course, we have uh, Algeria, Tunisia, Nigeria and Senegal. It's going to be a legendary battle between the West and the North of Africa. And to discuss this with me, I have with me in the studio a sports writer, Ifreke Inyang. And of course, the sports analyst, Solis Chuku, welcome to the show. Thank you for Thank having you very me. Much. Welcome yeah. to the show. So let's talk about the general organization of African Cup of Nations this year. Would you say that African football has, has actually come of age? Um, when you say African football has come of age, it's, it's, it's a very broad question, you know. So is what, what exactly are you saying has come of age? Because first and foremost, the organization of the 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 competition itself, yeah. I've had issues. I mean, I've had friends that had accreditation and they could not travel. Their names on the CAF website, they got accredited, but they didn't get documents, so they are stuck here in Nigeria. Mm. I had friends that had visa, visa issues and, you know, had to pay under the table to get it released to travel. Well, but would, so, that I be, mean, would that be the problem of the organizing body of African Cup of Nations or is it a Nigerian be, problem? It's not. It's, it's CAF. It's a CAF problem, really. Yeah. You know, and then the visa issues also from Egypt, because all these things should have been sorted out. You know that when once a competition of that magnitude is being hosted in your country, that all these things, media, um, tourism, flights, everything has to be on, on A level. Is that know? not supposed so, to be the job of the NFF to make sure that they properly... The NFF can, can only handle the team, really. They can't ha maybe the supporters club, I'd mm. say. But, I mean, what about fans going or media people or individuals? They are going to watch the Nations Cup, you know, they cannot cater for such people. Yeah. And for the football, African football will always be, Af will always be Africa's football, you know, because um, there's really not a lot you can do in, I mean, it used to be four years, it's now two years, mm. that you just, and they just moved it to the summer, you know. I don't think we have summer in Africa, but whatever, yeah. you know. So you don't expect that um, there's going to be like a huge change, you know, though there's sub African. Mm. It's always, always going to play our power and pay style, and while the North Africans are closer to you. So you're, you're basically saying that we have not necessarily. Yeah, so we just improved. enjoy the games and not really look forward to a lot happening. Would you agree with him, Solis? Well, yeah, for the most part, I think he's, he's very accurate. Um, there have been a lot of issues, like you said, organizationally, um, in terms of um, this tournament, and Egypt have done their best. We always knew Egypt is a good host, they're a great tourism destination. Yeah. the world over, but um, there's an intersection between them and CAF that has not been perfect. Um, some of that has to do with the fact that Egypt um, were confirmed as hosts pretty late um, in comparison to how hosting rights are usually assigned. So um, you have to say fair play to Egypt for what they've been able to come up with so far, but CAF really, really should have done better with their flagship competition. All right. So if Reka, let's talk about our team. Uh, the Nigerian Super Eagles. How would you rate their performance so far in the competition? Um, honestly, I think the, the football has been exhausting to watch. But, I mean, as it is, uh, for, for example, let, let's take it international. Um, people complain a lot about Mourinho's style of football, that it's, it's talky, it's hard, it's defensive. But he's a serial winner. So mm. if you're playing that kind of difficult football and you've gotten to the semifinals, or the nation's cup, well, who are we to complain? Mm. All the people that came with their flair and their counter attacking football, they've taken return flight back to their houses. So, I mean, yeah, so overall, it's not been easy on the eye, but we're at the semi finals, and so yeah, it's fine. Wait, what do you mean it has not been easy on the eye? Uh, what, are, what are the lapses you've observed? Um, for instance, we are not fluid in attack. I mean, even from transition, in transitions, we are not fluid enough, you know, something that you enjoy watching, even if we are going to lose. You enjoy watching us lose. I mean, if you're an Arsenal fan, for instance, yeah. you, can, ugh, you can tolerate the loss if the football is great. Or if you're a Baka fan, 
mm. because the, the, the passing of the movement, and then maybe it's just a team that sits back and absorbs all that pressure and then hits mm. you on the counter, and then you lose. And you can say, okay, it wasn't our day. But the football is something you look forward to. You want to buy a ticket and watch. So you're know? not concerned about the goals. You are, you are, you're concerned because, about the play. Because, I mean, again, the football has not been good, and the goals have not been coming. You know, so it's just, but somehow we're in the semi finals, and so we take that. That is not sounding enthusiastic. I, 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 I thought you'd be more enthusiastic and, and, and be more patriotic if I would use that way. But huh? I, like, I started the response with, if, if I want to be honest. Okay. But you said patriotic. I was like, yeah, we've done well, we're excellent. We're in the because we need to make sure we that we're in the win. spirit. We are going to win. We need to make sure we're in the spirit, in the right spirit for today's game. So, Liz, you want to say something? I, uh, I, I agree with what you said regarding the style of play, but um, it's important that in international football, you, you realize things are not always perfect. Um, these coaches, you know, this is the first time that most of these coaches have had weeks to spend with their teams to perfect the style to figure out the strengths and weaknesses of the players they actually have. So for Nigeria to get to the semi-final, I think on the whole you have to say Ro has done well if you're looking purely at the results. Mm -hmm. The particulars of the performance, now that is a totally different thing. There have been a lot of issues um, in terms of the balance of the team defending versus attacking. Yeah. In terms of the team's transition from attack to defense, there's been a problem. The composition of the midfield, there's been a problem. The attack, um, in terms of the personnel and how they are deployed, there's been a problem. So, um, I, I guess it's more impressive that in spite of these problems, we are actually in the semi-final, if you look okay. at it that way. So, with, with the challenges, who has been the revelation, uh, the revelation for you, the, the player, the star player so far for on the, our team? For, oh, for the Nigeria team. The tournament's team. revelation. Mm, for the Nigeria team, I would say probably Chido Ziawazim. Um, not a revelation in the sense that he was a complete unknown, but he's coming to the team in a position that is not natural to him. He's playing at a right, as a right back due to um, an injury and you know, a couple of other things. But he's done very well. He's held his own. Defensively, he's been almost impeccable. He does have a penchant for giving away a lot of fouls. But that aside, I would have to say I'm very impressed with him. Um, the team has lacked a bit going forward by virtue of having him at right back. But, I mean, if you look at purely what you know, a lot of people would say, the fullback's job is to defend. Well, if you look at it that way, yeah. he's been excellent in this competition. Yeah. Well, where would you rather him be? He, he's, a center, he's a central defender, by, by, would I say by trade now. Mm. Um, naturally, he's a central defender. And in the center of defense, we do have an established partnership as well as an established backup. So yeah. it may take him a bit of time to establish himself in that position. Uh, today against Algeria, what are the difficulties you think that we might face in the course of the match? Uh, our attack has not been fluid, like I said. Um, yes, we have Chukweze on the right, and, but I, I have a problem with Musa on the left. Is it, because um, I watched a general press conference the other day and he was going on and on about um, Ahmed Musa's experience and I've not seen that experience come to the fore for the team in this tournament. I mean, against South Africa, a lot of people were going on and on about his pace and that it was beating the, the right back, the South African right back and everything. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the final ball, the goals, you know, the assist. And, and Ahmed Musa let himself down that day and most of the work was being done by a relatively green horn. Um, too crazy on, on, the, mm. on the right. So, yeah, and Igalo is static. His movement uh, is not a bit excellent. So, I'm very worried that because we've not even scored a lot in the competition, and then we are coming up against Algeria that probably will do a lot of the playing because they've scored like 10 goals and considered mm. one, you know. So, um, I'm very worried about our, our, our um, attack. Okay. Uh, so, Liz, would you say the players are motivated enough for today's match? I mean, it's not, it's not every day you get to play an AFCON semi-final. Uh, the occasion in itself should be enough motivation for these players. Um, these are professional footballers who play all over Europe in top competitions, but it's impossible to recreate um, the pressure and the stakes that come with playing for your country mm -hmm. on the international stage in a semi-final like this, when you know you're one game away from a final, one game away yes. from cementing a legacy that will probably last beyond your playing career. So um, they are motivated on that score by the occasion. And also, um, we've heard that there have been a lot of cash donations to the team. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, the expediency of that is, you know, it's a different matter, but... So um, that should also motivate them? Yeah, that, that, should, also, that should also factor So in. who should we look out for on the Algerian team? Who are the players that we should really look out for and, you know, warn our super egos to... <laughs> begin to be to be wary of them. Uh, I I think in terms of star power, the obvious answer would be Riyad Mahrez. But if you've actually watched Algeria play, um, they have a fantastic striker in Baghdad Bunejar up front, who has only scored once so far this competition. But he is absolutely crucial to the way they play. He's a nightmare to to defend against. Uh, a, a follower of mine on social media refers to him as the Algerian Diego Costa. Wow. So you could think of him in that, in that, um, in that light. He's constantly hurrying, constantly freeing defenders' nerves. He's trying to get a mistake out of them. He's pushing the defensive line back. Mm -hmm. And that gives a lot of space to Mares and Yusef Beleli on the left who can come in and um, play in between the lines. So I think he's the most important player. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on the players we should look out for? Nigeria, Algeria. Algeria. Um, he, he has basically said it all. Um, also, Feguli is doubtful for the game. Is also very crucial to how they play. Yeah, that, that, that's a big loss for them. Yeah, if, if he's not going to feature in the game, it's going to be a big, a huge loss. Because the coordinate is basically like the electricity in that team. You know, it brightens up everywhere, brings a spark and everything. And, yeah. and it's a creative force. If he's going to miss the game, then it's a huge miss for them, and I hope that we take advantage of that. But having said that, Mares and Belali, um, you can't, you can't. I mean, for Mares, for instance, mm. we've seen him do it. Um, I mean, not even at, at Manchester City, at least uh, that a drop of the shoulder, a ton of pace, and he's away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, he was speaking about how was him. How was him as as he needs to have a solid game with yeah. Collins. On, on, on the left, you know, against your, um, those Algerian white men. Okay, okay. We're going to get to the predictions, but before that, uh, do you really think, Ifreke, Nigeria has a chance to lift the trophy? Why not? Why not? We have every chance to win it. I mean, I usually suspect that the winner of the Nigeria-Algeria um, game will go on to win it. All mm. right. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, once you get to the semi-final, you're definitely in the mix to win it all. Uh, we, have two very, we have two very tough games before we get there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think we have a chance, of course, as, as much of a chance as anyone else mm. in the semi-final at this point. So we'll see how it goes. It's knockout football. Um, an yeah. incident could change things. In yeah. the Fantastic. So we've complained about the attack. We've complained about the defense. What other departments in the team, what other... From, what other part of the team is, is lacking because a lot of people have been complaining about um, our goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I, you're I, laughing, I, but it's I true. Was, I was hoping that wouldn't come up. <laughs> you were hoping that wouldn't come up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the, we, uh, the important thing really coming into this competition was for Raw to settle on one of our three goalkeepers. Neither, like, none of them was ideal. Coming, We all knew that. So he's picked um, Daniel Akwe and he's, you know, he's hitched his mask to that one and He's running in for all it's, for all, all it's worth. Akwe has not exactly convinced in the competition so far, but we've managed to keep teams at bay mostly, most of our games. The downside to that is now we have our two toughest games coming up against two, um, potentially two of the best sides left in the competition. Uh, so Akwe is going to have to earn his, his pay and he will be exposed in this game. It, it's up to him to you know, rise to the occasion. You're saying he will be exposed in this game as <laughs> if you're definitely sure. <laughs> no, no, not, 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 expo play. not exposed in the sense that he will do badly, but like he will have to face an examination in this game based so, on the, you know, the profile of the Ifreka, you were laughing. What are your thoughts on our goalkeeper? Um, I'd, I'd rather not say a lot on, on our goalkeeper, you know, but um, I'd, I'd like to know... Um, I mean, if I if if I if I'm able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with General, why why he didn't stick with Uzoho? I don't know. I, I know it's not everybody's um, um, cup of tea. Fish, yeah. but yeah. I think he was making a bit of progression. And in, I mean, he's 19, and um, these mistakes are bound to happen and everything. But I think he had a presence about him and he had potential to to be our number one for a long time. And yeah, I'm shocked that he's not even second choice. He has dropped all the way to third choice. Really, like. He might not even play in the in the African 
Cup of Nations this one year after he was manning the post against Argentina. So I'm very worried as how that happened. So I want to say a lot about Akwe and his wonderful display at the Afghan. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's 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 get a bit <laughs> realistic now. Um, we have four teams that are all dragging for the final spot. If not Nigeria, which team do you think might clinch it? I of course, it. we want Nigeria to win. I'm a Nigerian. Yeah. And of course, I don't. Want but to... we've done well to get this far. Exactly. So, know, so I mean, I think from I think the target for Raw was to get to the final four, and he has achieved it. You know, like I was I was talking to Solis before the. The, we came on and he said that if if we had not been to the semi-finals, it was like an automatic stack letter. Don't even bother flying back to Nigeria. Just go back. But it's gotten to the, yes, it's got it made the final four. So I mean, that's a given. Like I'm saying also to that the winner, I think the winner of the Afcon will come from this Nigeria Algeria semi-final. Okay. Because I've not been overly so you're saying if if, by if, if not if not Nigeria, then it has to be Algeria. That's what yes, you're saying. Yes, that I think because. What are your thoughts, Solis? Uh, well, um, Algeria have an advantage in that they've already played Senegal at this competition in the group stage, and they won that one. So they will, if they progress past Nigeria, they will go into the final, knowing that if they have to face Senegal, they've already done it before. So I think that gives them a little bit of an edge. They are, for me, the most tactically cohesive, coherent team at this AFCON that I've seen, um, having watched most of the teams play. So I, I wouldn't say, I would say if they won it, it would be totally deserved. They, they would be my pick. Okay, fantastic. So what are your predictions for today's match? Please, please be careful. <laughs> be careful when you're making this prediction. Yeah, that, that is that Please is be danger. very careful. So you're not lynched outside. Yes. I'm telling you. Mm, I, I'm going to go for Algeria to progress from today's game. I, I just think they are more certain in their identity and how they play. And even though they might be missing two very important players in Youssef Atal and Sofian Fehuli, um, they are just a more rounded side. They play, um, they can handle whatever you throw at them. They played physically against Senegal. They can hold the ball, they can counter, they can press. Whatever it is that you know, you have, they have to do. So are you predicting, what exactly, let's, let's be clear on what I'm you're predicting. I'm predicting Algeria to go through today. Go through in what to sense? The Algeria winning Nigeria, yes. is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm predicting. What, give us specifics. What numbers? I, I would say, I don't know, 2-0. 2-0? Nil, nil, two two nil. Nil. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know if you're going to make it out of the studio, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's, your, that's your personal opinion. What yeah, do you think, is. Ifreke? Um, I don't know who will win because my head and my heart says they are saying different things. Um, my head says oh, Algeria will win. My heart says Nigeria will win. So that's the battle that's happening within me. But um, I think it will be very close. It will be 2-1 or 1-0. Uh, if our attack don't show up, uh, no. Okay. 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 So Thank yeah, you very much. Nigeria, make it. And thank you so very much for coming on the show today. Thank you. I uh, wish you the me. very best. And please, my predictions for today is that Nigeria will win the match. Uh, yes. I don't mean to be religious. I would have used certain terms. But yes, by everything we believe in, by every deity we believe in, Nigeria will definitely win the match. My predictions would be 2-0. We will beat Algeria 2-0. All right, guys. Keep it locked down. We'll be right back.